Everybody, welcome to our Steelers Nation Unite Huddle. We are joined by Hall of Fame inductee for the 2021 class, Alan Fanica, coming off of the high of the big announcement. Um, a warm welcome when he got back from Tampa to his home in Virginia. Alan, thanks so much for taking the time. Have you had a chance to kind of take in uh, what is actually happening due to just all the craziness that comes with finding out you're heading to the Hall of Fame? I mean, who said I'm coming off the high, Missy? I'm, I'm not coming down yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it's, it. It's been, it's been amazing. It's been an awesome uh, an awesome ride, great weekend. And finally, you know, after sitting on it for two weeks, getting to uh, scream out loud and talk to people I've been dying to talk to and, and uh, literally hearing from every person that I've ever known from ever every walk and aspect of my life since I was eight years old uh, is, uh, you know, what's been going on. All right. Well, we love it, and we have tons of fans on our call today. And just a friendly reminder for everyone, if you would like to ask Alan a question, please press star three. We are going to get to as many as we can because we have tons of them. So uh, let's go to our first one. Alan, this is Bruce. And Bruce, you are now live. Go ahead and ask Alan your question, please. Bruce, are you there? Okay, Bruce, we're going to have to come back to you. I'm not hearing you right now. Let's go to Paul, who's in Arizona. Paul, you are now live. Go ahead and ask Alan your question. Yes, uh, I was just curious as to what it, what your greatest time that you remember while you were on the Steelers was. Man, my greatest time. Um you know, uh, it, it's easy. It's the Super Bowl, man. That that, that journey to the Super Bowl, that uh, that stretch run right there, uh, was uh, the best, uh, the best exciting times and the best. Um, you know, what I miss the most is is guys in a locker room uh, from playing football, and and that was just a great time. A guys just bonding and uh, building and growing together, and uh, that that journey was uh, an amazing one, and it ended up with a Super Bowl trophy. All right, we're going to jump around here, and let's go to – we have Charles, who is in Illinois. Charles, you're now live. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Alan Thacka. First of all, congratulations to being one of the newest Steelers member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well-deserved. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Hey, real quick, and Miss Matthews, I want to compliment you on Twitter. Uh, nice posting of the Alan Thacka snowman uh, yesterday. I just want to say that. <laughs> Real quickly, I just want to ask you real quickly, I know you had a chance to play with Bill Cowher the majority of your career in Tomlin, but being as a setter slash guard slash tackle, who would you say was the most difficult person on defense you had to, like, really work hard for, that you dreaded, like, seeing on a week-to-week basis or you feel like really worked you? Was there a point that sticks out, maybe like a Ray Lewis or – who would you say in your career wakes up there? Once again, congratulations, and thank you guys for taking my question. Stay warm, everybody. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, so many guys, uh, you know, the, the names that come to heart uh, to mind uh, first are, are the guys like Ray Lewis, uh, so smart, um, you know, the, the battle of wits uh, and uh, and strength uh, going on there when you're playing against Ray. Uh, Junior Seo had to be hands down the smartest guy I've ever played against in the world. I mean, he, he was a savant on the field, like, uh, like the, uh, the linebacker from the program. If any of you guys remember that, uh, that movie from back in the day, I mean, he just knew things before he even saw it the first time. It didn't, he didn't even need to see it one time to know it was coming the second time. He knew it was there the first time and would line up in the hole. And you're really, how does he know we're doing that? We haven't even run this play, uh, in like a month. Um, was just amazing. You know, big guys with their hand down in the ground. Um, you know, uh, Haladi Noda was uh, a load, man, and he was so good and uh, so strong. Big guy, gave uh, gave me lots of fits. Uh, but, you know, the guy that made me work the hardest uh, was Warren Sapp. He, he just played the, the position completely different than any other defensive tackle in the game. And, uh, you know, if, if you didn't change how you played – uh, offensive line against him, uh, you were going to get beat on Sunday. So you had to change. And so, so much uh, about playing offensive line is is repetition and routine and doing things uh, uh, day in and day out. Every every time you snap the ball, you're doing the same thing. That's 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 what makes a good O lineman really good. And 
you couldn't do that against Warren. So it's week 12, and you've been doing the same thing for 12 weeks and all in the training camp and everything. And it's week 12, and you got Warren Sapp, and you got to go in there on a Tuesday and pull your scout team guy aside and say, look, I need these things from you, and I need you to go hard all week. This is not a normal week. I need you to make me better this week because you were going to have to work on different things and, and just get used to it so you could go out there and be successful on Sunday. Okay, Alan, we have tons of questions coming in on our Steelers app. Uh, so one is from Robert. He's in Virginia Beach, and he wants to know, what is keeping you busy these days? Are there any thoughts of putting up the flagpole and flying the black and gold out back for us local fishermen to enjoy? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you're probably right. I do need to get a flag up uh, in, in the backyard. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm coaching some high school football at Cox High School uh, for uh, Virginia Beach residents. Um, so I've been enjoying that. We're actually uh, in the midst of a uh, COVID-delayed uh, season, so we're having a, a shorter season that we're putting on the pads tomorrow. Hopefully, if the weather permits, we're going to play a season. And, um, you know, besides that, I've got a couple little business things going here and there, and I've... Uh, uh, it's been on my bucket list forever was to uh, get into woodworking, and I finally uh, uh, decided to go all in, and I rented a, a shop space and, and started buying some of the, the bigger equipment that doesn't fit in your garage, and I'm uh, just starting to uh, learn that and uh, do things in that department. I just made a, a table for some friends that uh, moved into a house, a new house, so uh, I have really enjoyed doing that lately. That's awesome. All right, we have a question coming to you from Michelle. She's in North Carolina. Michelle, you're live. Go ahead and ask Alan your question, please. Yes, Alan. Uh, it's been a, such a long wait for your hall call. How do you feel about finally making it in? Oh, man, I'm excited. You know, it's, uh, you know, when, when, you, when you don't make it those, those years and, it, you know, it just keeps adding and building, uh, you know, it's, it's not fun. It's not fun for the whole family, but you know, when you when you finally get in, uh, it's, it's like it all just never happened, really. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's what what the excitement uh, that's going on right now is what you're you're you've been expecting and anticipating, and which which is what made it hurt when you uh, didn't get in those last couple of years. And um, you know, I'm by no means the first or the last guy or the guy that's had to wait the longest to uh, to get in. It's just a process. But uh, you know, getting in, you really forget about all those days. Okay, Alan, our next question is from Greg. He is in Atlanta. Greg, go ahead and ask your question, please. Hello. Hey, Alan, thanks for taking my call. Um, oh, my pleasure. My question, uh, well, and th thank you for the good years you gave us, by the way. But um, my question was, you know, out of all the characters and players you played with, who would be your favorite, and do you have any good untold stories you can share about them? <laughs> There's a reason they're untold there, Greg. Um, you know, so many characters uh, come through, um, you know, just uh, fun guys in the locker room. You know, I mean, it, it's probably a no-brainer that everybody knows, but Jerome, man, he was uh, such a, a character and a lively guy uh, in the locker room and out of the locker room and on the field that, uh, you know, he was definitely the guy that was uh, – bringing jokes and laughter and uh, fun times, um, you know, uh, untold stories and untold story. Uh, it's, uh, it's um, man, what election was this? This was, uh, uh, oh, man, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, I'll tell it again in a minute if it comes to me. But there's so many, so many guys, so many characters. Okay, we're going to go back to another app question for you. Uh, this one is from David Price Allen. He said, how did you keep up your, white, your weight as a player, excuse me, and how about since you've slimmed down in retirement? Well, one thing's for sure, I've never been the size that I am today ever in my life. So uh, I, I was always the big kid. And um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I was always the big kid, and then so when you go to college and you start learning what actually eating a little bit healthy is like, so then, you know, I kind of started to have to eat a little bit more to maintain the weight, and then uh, as I progressed through the NFL, I did get to a point where, you know, I, I did have to eat, uh, you know, several meals a day uh, to maintain the, the 320 uh, weight, uh, especially in the off season, doing all the heavy lifting and running, and you know, when I lost the when I lost all the weight, is really the only one thing I missed were these uh, protein shakes that I would make, 
And during the training season, during the off season, I would eat two, maybe three a day. And I mean, I was just dropping peanut butter in there, extra protein, whole milk, all kinds of uh, stuff in there. And I, I never would add up anything what I was putting in there. So I started adding it up after I'd lost all the weight. And there was north of 800 calories in each shake. And I was eating two or three of those a day between meals. Wow. What else was in there besides peanut butter? Oh, uh, I mean, peanut butter, whole milk, I mean, probably double or triple the protein scoops. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes I throw a banana in there. Uh, it, it was the best peanut butter chocolate shake you ever had in your life. <laughs> okay, we are going to go live to Barbara, who has a question for you. Barbara, go ahead and ask Alan your question, please. Hi. Um, my my question is, is, you know, throughout when you were younger and you were diagnosed with the epilepsy and everything like that, you know, and then going through to pro, how did you handle, how did you cope with the concept of being in the limelight, being you know, the sight of people and know that, you know, there's a chance that being connected bodily and hitting your head could cause you to have those seizures. You know, was that was that an insecurity thing or was that just kind of something you were just like, you know what, if it happens, I'm going to bring a light to the fact that people can still do things with these issues? Um, you know, I had a great core uh, group around me, uh, my doctors and my family when I was first diagnosed. And, um, you know, we, we were very open and very frank and talked about it, and I think it helped me to be open about it. And, uh, you know, my my friends at the time in high school when I was diagnosed, you know, they knew something was going on. And, you know, the easiest way for me to, to dispel it was just to be open. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's scary. A lot of people only know about epilepsy is kind of what you see on TV. You know, they, they see the, the person that convulses on the floor, and it's, you know, it's pretty scary. You know, it, it sells movies and TV. Uh, but it's not really like that all the time for everybody. And, uh, you know, it's not as scary as that all the time as well. So, uh, you know, I, I always put it, I always kind of flipped the table a little bit on people and, uh, you know, made it seem like I was taking care of them, uh, answering their questions and making sure that they were okay. And kind of as I flipped it on them, they, everybody just seemed to be like, well, he's fine with it. So I guess I'm going to be fine with it and move on. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had those embarrassing moments. Uh, I've had a, uh, I've had a seizure, uh, early morning at my house, uh, at, uh, when I was in high school and, uh, I lived about a mile from school and, uh, uh, my mom had already left for work and I, I walked to school in my pajamas and, uh, you know, so I've, I've had those moments and, uh, uh, anytime I get a chance to talk to especially young, young kids who are going through it, you know, cause they're, they're worried about those moments and, uh, uh, you know, there's enough hard moments uh, growing up without having to deal with uh, having epilepsy to uh, share those moments and let them know that they're not alone. And, you know, that this uh, I'm not this humongous football player anymore, but, you know, this guy right here that's going to the Hall of Fame, uh, you know, he, he's had those embarrassing moments, too. And he's up here talking about it. And it's maybe not as bad uh, as it is, as you think it is, is, uh, you know, something that's precious to be able to share. All right, Alan, we now have Brian. You are now live. Brian, go ahead and ask your question, please. Brian, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, Alan, uh, congratulations. Okay. Well, des well deserved. Um, long, long overdue. Thank you. Uh, hey, Alan, just look, man, you played for my two favorite teams, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and and. Uh, with LSU, um, um, living on the North Shore. Just wanted to know if you had any uh, influences uh, from, from the playing days at LSU that you carried on to your pro career. Oh, so many. Um, you know, so many of the guys, uh, so many of the habits that I brought with me uh, into the NFL, uh, I learned from guys or, or, or learned with guys that I played with uh, at LSU. You know, I learned a lot about uh, – uh, communication and, and, and the importance of, of the buddy next to you uh, from uh, playing playing with the buddy next to you. Uh, with uh, I got to play with uh, Ben Borderline for a while at LSU, and uh, you know a lot of my pulling uh, ability uh, and skills and, and my my kind of thought process uh, uh, developed with a buddy of mine there, Adam Perry. Uh, he and I kind of 
you know, had to had the same mindset and kind of kind of ran with it on our own. And, and we would talk a lot and uh, discuss uh, pulling and, and how we would do it and, and just kind of came up with a plan. And, and, you know, that stuck with me throughout my career. And that's happened to be one of the better things that I did in the NFL was was, was pulling that uh, made me uh, who I was and where I'm at today a big time. Okay, another app question for you from a fan named James Allen. He wants to know, what is the first thing you did when you found out you were heading to the Hall of Fame? The first thing I did? Man, first thing I did after after David Baker stepped away, uh, I think I just stood there, man. I Literally, I was just standing there in the room, and everybody was excited around me, and I was, pretty much felt like I was just floating. Um we had a, a, a tight knit group of friends uh, that had found out uh, kind of as it was going on. Uh, so we did get a chance to celebrate with uh, a couple of friends uh, and tell them uh, that we're here in town. So that's that the first thing we did, man. We, we had a blast, uh, uh, hit the fire, hit the, uh, the uh, fire pit outside and then built a little bonfire and just uh, told stories and laughed all night long. All right, we have another live question. This is from Randy in Ohio. You are now live. Randy, go ahead and ask your question, please. Hey, Alan, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm just doing great. I, hey, cool. Hey, uh, in the locker room, uh, was there anybody that's really a good joker? And uh, do you miss button heads with them, uh, Stinky Brown? Miss button heads with, with who? He said the Browns. Oh, with the Browns. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, tons of jokesters uh, in the locker room. And, um, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, I don't necessarily miss the butt in the head so much, but I, I do miss the game and, and the fun that goes around with it, but not the uh, not the preparation that's uh, involved in the, the, the dedication in that area of the department. But uh, I do miss the game. It's, uh, it's so fun and um, uh just uh you know where else where else can you do your job in front of 80,000 people right that's uh you can't do that <laughs> at at your desk okay we have peter who is here in pittsburgh peter you're now live go ahead and ask your question please for a minute this is what you want to do you have a vocabulary quiz on wednesday that is on ben betty hi peter can you hear us hi hi uh what what advice do you have to give to young people? Oh, that's a great question, Peter. Um, my advice to young people would be to uh, dream big and go after them. And, uh, you know, I, I think another thing is that uh, even to this day, I, I think I think some people think they, they, they've known it all. And... Um, that uh, you never know it all, and you always should be looking to learn and find uh, find new ways to uh, to to learn and, and whatever you're trying to do, whether it be school or sports. Uh, there's always something else you can kind of put in your uh, in your tool bag, as a good friend of mine, Will Shields, uh, uh, always said. He was always looking for something new to put in his tool bag. So you can always learn, keep learning, and uh, shoot high. Okay, another app question for you, Alan. This one is from Heather. She said, besides the infamous block in the Super Bowl, what is another play that sticks out to you? Um, you know, I, I don't know what year it is, but uh, we were playing the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati, and I, uh, I had about – I had – three uh pulling plays where I literally destroyed the same guy and I can't I, I can't I can't remember his name right now uh but I mean I literally just obliterated him if they, he just didn't see me coming and I really got got him good and uh coach Cower actually nominated me for uh, offensive player of the week uh for how I played in that game and especially those uh three uh blocks I got on the, their linebacker and uh, the funny thing was is he came to uh to Pittsburgh he was in our he was on our team in training camp but then he got cut but uh that was the first thing everybody started razzing him about it and he had to get up uh real quick in a team meeting and, and, and address it so he could uh stop all the jokes <laughs> coming his way <laughs> okay our next question is from Chris in Tennessee you are live now Chris go ahead and ask your question please yeah I was just curious 
What made you pick the number you wore all the years you did? I know everybody usually has a special reason why they pick their numbers. Um, so I, uh, I got number 66 in high school, and uh, my, my high school coach, my O-line coach, gave it to me, and he was like, this is your number. This is, gonna, this is, uh, this is what's uh, going to be good for you. It kind of was purposely given to me. He thought it looked good on me, and um, so that's how I started with it, and then I, I stuck with it. I, I got to LSU with 66, and then uh, if uh, some of you might remember, I briefly wore 65 uh, my very first year in uh, Pittsburgh because uh, veteran Jim Sweeney had it, and I had to let uh, I had to let Jim finish out with his 66, but the equipment guys knew that uh, if, if and when Jim were tired, I wanted to go back to 66. Okay, our next question is from Cheryl. You are now live. Go ahead and ask Alan your question, please. Hey, Alan, congratulations um, Thank on you. being selected. I've been waiting for you to be um, get that call. I'm so excited because I want to let you know that you, um, the first lineman that I really uh, pay a lot of attention to, so you made me give lineman, offensive linemen a total just all the respect. But my question is, uh, Coach Cower um, seems so tense on the sideline. Was he funny um, in the locker room when y'all, you know, when y'all were practicing? <laughs> uh, well, first off, thank you so much. Um, you know, Coach Cower had his moments where he would let his guard down and um, and, and joke around uh, a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, one time. So this is the year we were going for the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 40, and he began every team's speech with, we were on a ship, and it didn't matter what everybody off the ship was saying. And he, and he kind of he brought something new to it every day, but it always was the basis was we were on a ship, and everybody was just like going for it, you know, just letting him go. He, was, he had to get a little inventive after a while. And then uh, one week he comes in and he's like, you know, you're on this ship and you raise up that periscope. Don't raise that periscope up and look around at everybody. And I started looking around at everybody. It was right at the end of the meeting. So I had to go run and catch him. I was like, hey, coach, man, I'm with you. I just want to know, are we on a boat or are we on a submarine? I just need to know for my own, my own personal reasons. And he lost it. He started laughing. He's like, man, he, he started messing with me after that one. He's like, how did I do today, Alan? Is that okay? Are we all, are we all good right now? <laughs> I never heard that one before. That's really good. Um, okay, yeah. let's get to a few more questions before we unfortunately have to let Alan go. Um, this one is from Daniel in Seattle. You are now live. Go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Alan, uh, congratulations, man. Um, Thank fan. you, Daniel. Yeah, um, I was wondering, all right, so uh, coming into football, you know, even back in the high school, did you ever picture yourself like being in the Hall of Fame? Did you ever? And what was the what was the mindset going through? Like, uh, you know, what's the mindset of 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 a champion? You know, yeah. what, what got this place? Um, so when I was in high school, man, I just wanted to play big time college football. I didn't know anything different. You know, that was my goal was to get a scholarship and play uh, big time di uh, Division One football. And then when I got into college, that was my goal was to get into the NFL. It wasn't anything more than that. Uh, but then as things progressed, you know, uh, my, my offensive line coach pulled me aside and, you know, started setting, setting goals. And we had, you know, kind of a goals meeting. And, um, you know, at the very end of his list was uh, HOF. And, you know, at the time, I didn't know that it stood for Hall of Fame. You know, I just didn't, hadn't really thought about it. And, uh we got a good joke about that uh, this past weekend, as a matter of fact. But, um, so, you know, I kind of took that meeting, and I, always, I was always setting goals. Uh, I kept a notebook uh, every year and for the whole season, and I still have all 13 of those notebooks. And that first cover, man, I'd flip the cover over, and I would, I would just start some, writing some goals down. I would, I would write down uh, make the Hall of Fame. I would write down I needed something I needed to do better, uh, whether it was uh, leadership-wise or – or uh, just uh, something to work on in my run game or pass protection, just even if it was small goals, I was always writing goals down. And um, I think, you know, the ability to be a champion is, 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 is a mindset. You know, you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe and push yourself 
farther than even you think that uh, you're capable of getting to. And, uh, you know, you're going to achieve it along the way. Even if you don't ever get to your goal, you're still going to achieve your greatness. Okay, our next question is from Ruth in Kentucky. You are now live. Go ahead and ask your question, please. Hi, Alan. Congratulations. I was just wanting to know who at the Steeler organization, your team players or coaches, made you feel the most welcome when you were a new Steeler? When I was a new Steeler? Uh-huh. Uh, um, you know, when I first got there, everybody was so uh, so warming. Uh, you know, Mr. Rooney came out and, and met me and uh, was just just very heartfelt, interested in, in, in getting to know me and, and uh, meet me and uh, just to just to talk about small things, not even necessarily football was, uh, uh, but everybody in the organization uh, was like that, much like that. But Mr. Rooney uh, definitely uh, stands out in my mind uh, those, uh, you know, first couple of days of getting here and uh, being introduced to the Steeler. And, and really, you know, this it's, it's, it's a family run organization and um, it's, it still is today. And it's, you know, when you walk in those first couple of days, you really, you really feel it. And, you know, maybe I didn't know it uh, as a young guy coming out of college back then, but definitely as you go through it and look back on it, uh, you know, that, that family atmosphere of, uh, you know, we're all in this together is, uh, it's pretty special in the NFL. And, uh, you know, I, um, I got a chance to uh, catch up with Omar Khan, uh, who's in the front office. Uh, He, he tracked me down at the Super Bowl in Tampa to, uh, to give me a hug and congratulate me, man. And, uh, I had to text him afterwards. Uh, it just meant the world to me to to find to to hug somebody in the in the Steelers organization in the Steelers family. Uh, that uh, just meant the world to me. All right, Alan. Well, you mean the world to us. Thank you so much for doing our Steelers Nation Unite Huddle today. Congratulations once again on being induct- an inductee into the Hall of Fame. We cannot wait until August in Canton, Ohio. So for everybody on the call, thanks for joining us. Thanks for all the questions. Sorry we can never get to everybody, but you can also download the Steelers mobile app. Go to the Steelers Nation Unite section to listen to the full recap of this call uh, and also find out about future huddles. So, Alan, once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Missy, and thank you, everybody. This was fun. Okay, we'll see everybody next time on The Huddle. Thanks for joining us.